Welcome to the Profitable Cleaner Podcast. Join your hosts, James Harper and Angel Sandoval, bringing you the experts, discussions, and knowledge you want. We talk about sales, technology, marketing, operations, strategy, leadership, mindset, health, God, and so much more. Now, are you ready to profit? All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Profitable Cleaner. I get to do a solo podcast without my other co-host, so I'm super excited because I get a one-on-one with the one and only Lisa McQueen, CEO of Clean Corp, all the way down from Australia. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm great. Thanks, Angel. And thanks so much for having me on today. No, I've been, you know, I know we've been kind of playing back and forth, trying to get you on the podcast. I know we had to reschedule. And so, Juan, I'm just super excited that we're here today, especially because you're our first ever Australian guest. How does it feel to be the first ever international guest? I feel incredibly privileged, to be honest. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great... Uh, a lot of great entrepreneurs here in Australia. So thank you for having me on. Um, and it's great. It's, it's, it is really great to be here. Really great to be here. Well, if you know any other ones, you know, send us our way. We would love to, <laughs> to get a little bit more. We're in there, more in the UK side. I love that you're here, though, today. Um, for those that don't know you, let's say somebody just jumped in here and they just want to get to know you. Give us the one minute brag a little bit about yourself before you get to talk good and then we'll dive into some questions. Absolutely. Um, I run a national cleaning business here in Australia. So we are located right across Australia and New Zealand and I have a, an amazing team of um, very, very dedicated people who provide our services every day. My Husband Amy started the business uh, 29 years ago. I was just telling Angel, we just, yeah. Well, I mean, we've just we've we've just celebrated our birthday, so we're super excited about that. And we're growing. We are we're growing fast, and we're growing in a way that is, I think, a sign of the times. I sometimes say that we are we're like a 29 year old startup. Um, we're <laughs> agile. We're quick on our feet. We're able to sort of see an opportunity and run at it. Um, and I love that about this. So, so uh, you know, our business, it's all about service, but it's also about smart marketing and making sure that we stand out in an incredibly, incre- like especially here in Australia, an incredibly crowded market. So that, that's 100%. kind of, yeah, that's kind of my, my, one, my one minute. So, yeah, no worries. <laughs> when you say so you you I, we're gonna pull from a lot of the things that i say by the way i love paying attention to words i get very excited about words for some reason so you mentioned agile right you mentioned yes. crowded and you mentioned smart marketing so first things first agile how can a janitorial company be agile to like agility what does that mean to you um for us Look, I, I, I think any company can be agile, but it, it's very much a mindset thing. It's so easy as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, it's super easy to just say, well, we, you, you know, we've, we've figured it all out. We, this is how we do it, and we've done it this way every day, and it works. And I, I'm just never satisfied with that, Angel. That's, that's something that I think has been kind of baked into this business as well. Nobody else here is. So we're always looking for ways where we can create, you know, a 1% improvement or a 10% improvement or, you know, whatever the improvement is, is we're looking for it. We're looking for ways to make sure that the way that we're offering our services is still in alignment with what our customers want because our customers are changing too. So whereas we were dealing with customers of, you know, an you know, like an older age bracket in the past. Now our customers are so much younger. So we need oh, yeah. to be we need to be able to be, you know, that's part of that being quick on your feet. Seeing the change in the marketplace and then responding to that appropriately so mm. that you continue to attract your ideal client. So that for, for me, I mean that's just one example of, of agility. And also, you know, certainly um, we're very early adopters. Um, with technology, so okay. you know, while, while everybody else has been using, you know, a communication book and a pen, pen and pad to, 
write things yeah. down on site. We we don't do that. Like the pen and paper on site is just something that for me it's not dependable enough. So we we moved it to tech, like a tech a tech solution ten, almost ten years ago now, way way yeah. way before anybody else. So that that's that that's where the agility really comes in for us. Well, you said something cool because like so agility and then like kind of forecasting where the markets go in or what's happening, the trends. How do you and your team stay updated? Like, does that information all come to you, or do you have a team like going out there and strategically researching and things like that? Like, how do you guys get in front of it? Um, I, to be honest, it's it's super organic the way that happens. Um, I'm I I love to read, I love to learn. So I'm I'm always consuming content whether it's online. Mm. If I'm at an airport, I can't go to an airport without going to the bookstore and buying a book. I just can't. It's, it's just a weird mm. weird thing for me. So I'm I'm always looking for something, but my reticular activating system is open. So I mm. I, I I I I'm never going to think I I'm finally I know it all. I just I know it all now and no one can teach me anything. I just, I'm just not wired that way. And I'm so lucky because the team that I lead, they're the same. They're always bringing things to me. Oh, I saw this out in the marketplace or someone mentioned that to me or I read this on LinkedIn. And it's like that melting pot of ideas. And mm. we, you know, we have a, we have a company meeting here every Tuesday. And I mean, you should hear it in here when we have the company meeting. It's, it, it is it is literally the melting pot of ideas and it's it's great because everybody is heard and sometimes the ideas are crazy and sometimes they're just crazy enough to get up. So 100%. yeah, so it's 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 I think I think for the team feeling like they can they can come to work and they can contribute their ideas and in a really safe environment where yeah. no one's gonna no one's gonna shoot that idea down what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can flesh it out. We're going to see if, can, can we, could we make that work or could we make it part of that work or is it, is it just not for us? And, 100%. Um, you know, we, we, we're, we're pretty good at making it work. I've got to say it's, it seems to be one of those things that I think when you work with a team like I do, where you operate at, you know, at a speed of the speed of trust, all of a sudden, it opens a lot of a lot of the doors speed and of breaks what? down barriers. The speed of trust. I love um, that. Yeah, we you know we that there, there is a great deal of trust within within this organisation. So yeah, it's um, huh. that, I don't know. I'm ra I'm rambling on here. I'm sorry. I no. could probably talk about this for hours. But that, that I think that that that's really where the agility comes from. No, listen. If again, you're you're mentioning a lot of things, and I love it. I love paying attention. I can tell you said particular activating system for those that don't know what that is would you mind telling them a little bit about what that is sure sure okay so um years ago <laughs> there's always a backstory with me too by the way years <laughs> ago <laughs> i read this book by um by a, a guy called john Asaraf called the answer mm. it, it was a very random book again i love i love reading and he talked about how you can how your mind a lot about how your mind works and one yeah. of the one of the great examples that i can i can share with you today about your reticular activating system is when you buy a new car so if you go out and you buy um you know a new um a new bmw let's say a new bmw and all of a sudden you see bmws everywhere everywhere everywhere, yep. everywhere. whereas before you didn't see them that is your reticular activating system in your in your brain. It's looking for like-minded things. It's looking for things, so mm. you can you can um, you can harness that for other things that you're looking for as well. And that's and the book really talked about that. And I, I would highly recommend if there's anyone on the podcast listening listening to this right now, this book was life changing for me. It, it, the answer. It really, it really, yeah, it's called The Answer by John Atharath. Um, and it was really, there were a lot of business lessons in there um, and and a lot about how to use, you know, neuroscience to, I, I guess, to just open your mind to different, different oh, ideas. So, 
Yeah. So I hope I've explained it. I'm, I'm certainly not an expert, no, yeah. but that's... That was perfect. That scenario that you just gave is... So I, I know what it is. So I love I love the way you explained it because that's true. That's true. And so, but like you said, it's super important that like-mindedness and that open-minded to know what you're looking for. A lot of people, we don't know. They don't know what they're looking for, what they should keep an eye out for. And so that's where that comes with exposure, right? That comes with, mm-hmm. with knowing. So that is so, that is so key. And yeah. if you're listening to this and you're going, Oh, I already knew that, but you're not getting the results that you want to, you, you're not actually harnessing it. You're just watching and there's a difference. So that's really cool. That's really cool. Now you did mention another thing, move at the speed of trust. That's a hell of, first of all, that's a, that's a hell of a line right there because there's the speed, you know, you know, speed of light or sound, but then there's trust. What I've never heard anybody say speed of trust. But what does that mean to you? Well, to me, it means that I can I can be as the CEO, and I think that and I believe today there will be people listening to this podcast that this will resonate with them, or it won't resonate with them. So apologies mm. to those that it doesn't. But as a CEO in this business. I, I, you know, I, like my, my office is just there. I sit with everybody. I don't have an office. I, and I don't have an office because I don't want one. I want to sit in the bear pit. I want to sit in the bear pit with my team. I want to be, I want to be, you know, in the trenches with them every day. And, and I am. And, and because of that, I, I'm I'm just I'm just one of the team. It just it just happens to be that I'm 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 the part of the team that makes the you know more or less the final decision. But that nothing goes on in this business that um you know that people have to go. Oh, don't tell Lisa. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We operate that for, for me. That's that's operating at the speed of trust. There is no um you know m- like. I'm the boss, and therefore I'm I'm the one that knows all the right answers. I'm not I, I am sort of not that not arrogant enough to think that I do, and I depend on the team to you know to manage up to me and filter up to me what I need to know. And over the time that we've um, you know we've worked together, we've built that trust, and and I, I it's very hard to articulate it because it's it's a feeling as much as a thing. It's oh, a yeah. um, it's a competence as much as a, as as much as um, you know just just something that you take for granted. So having that means that everyone on my team just they just don't have any fear of coming and giving me bad news. If they have to give me bad news, it's like, hey, we're in this together. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Or or they they come to me and they say, we've got you know this this challenge has happened. Here's what I think the solution is. What do you think? So we're we're making decisions at a much higher level, at a much higher pace, because we trust each other. Mm. So, well, one, I agree. I, I agree with the like. It's almost like a pulse. One of our mentors, one of our speakers, actually from last year, said like, you got to walk into your business, and there has to be like a beating pulse. You can tell where where the pulse is at, even without looking at the numbers. But of course backed up by the numbers as well right because mm. you can say it has a great pulse or great culture great trust but if we're not making money there's something's mm. broken right so there there have to be a line but what i'll play devil's advocate for a little bit here so let's say somebody's like has a speed of trust at what point that you're scaling um do you almost have to start i guess let me rephrase this What's your role then now? So as a CEO, where people can funnel information up very fast and you can make movements, how do you trust them with their decisions? What becomes your role? Is your role to make decisions for them? Is your role to make the final decision? Is it just guiding the ship? Like what what becomes your role when you have something that can be funneled up and down mm. very fast? Uh, look, it's a little bit of all of that because I have, I, it's because I know I have the right people on the bus in the right seat. Um, as information comes up, and we call it managing up. So, so I, I have a very, I have a very small team who manage up to me, and then they have a bigger team who manage up mm. to them. So the information transference happens uh, like efficiently, and yeah. uh, it, 
depending on which level you're 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 communicating it. You know, you know, you've either been through that situation before, whereas you, so you can pretty much make that decision w with a little bit of support, or you're looking for some mentorship, and that's that's where I come in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, you, if you come to me and you ask me a question or you you present a challenge to me or some feedback that you've had, I'm go the first thing I'm going to say is, well. What, what what are your thoughts? What do you think we should be doing? And I'm going to be quiet. That's m my job is very much to be quiet and to listen. And then once we have uh, uh, extricated what they think should be done, then and only then I'm going to say to them, you know what? I like I like where you're going with that. Have you thought about this? And then we'll talk about that. So it's it's very much done, you know, it's a very democratic society here, um, but it works. It, it really does work. And I've, I've worked in, you know, in my previous roles and pre, by previous, I mean, before I joined the cleaning industry, I worked in a very hierarchical um, organization or multiple organizations where yeah. It, it, it was very difficult to move a decision, no matter how, how large or small the decision was, very difficult to move the decision. And it was like having a great big ship in the middle of the ocean trying to turn it. And I've never <laughs> yeah. wanted to have um, a, an organization like that. I've, I've always wanted the, I've wanted the freedom, as an entrepreneur, I've, I've wanted the freedom of being able to change, change direction if needed. And, yeah, um, yeah and that's so, key. And so equipping and empowering the team to to be able to do that has really been key, I think. And it's also helped upskill them and and their critical thinking. So, I, it, you know, if, if all the ideas for this business come out of my head, then that's not good for the business. And okay. that is not scalable. Um, so I, I think being, you know, being humble and and accepting that I, I just don't have all the answers, but I'm going to help facilitate find them if necessary. Hundred percent. I think that's a skill set in itself, right? Helping others come to their own conclusion, helping mm -hmm. others come to the decision. Because then, if it's only your decision, you're right; they're not really bought into it. Here's yeah. a question for you, then. So you said, like, okay, I've been in part of bigger ships, where here's an idea, or here's what we should do, and it's like. Nothing really happens. It's just kind of almost moving. Going forward, I'm assuming your goal is to keep growing, obviously, right? Clean yeah. Corp. What, like if someone's listening to this and going, okay, well, I really want to scale too, and I want to have the speed of trust. What systems or what advice would you give somebody or to yourself, to your future self, to make sure that when they double in size, they can still make these, these uh, fast shifts? without mm -hmm. rocking the boat too much. Yeah. I look, I think I think the first thing is to just be to own just to own the fact you don't know it all. And be okay with that. Like literally be okay with that. Just because you're the boss that it it doesn't mean that you have to be the oracle. So be open mm -hmm. to learning. I, I think that's a really important one. And the other the other really important one to, to answer this this question is you need to be humble. Like you need to be humble. And if if I marched around here and I'm the boss and listen to me, I I would. I mean they'd all laugh at me anyway. But I I, I just I, it's that's not the organisation I want to work for. I don't want to work yeah. for a I don't want to work for a company where my team don't feel like I I will be there wherever there is. I will be out on site mm. at, in the middle of the night. I'll be out on site at first thing in the morning if I need to. I don't need to, but if I needed to, I would do that. And and I think it's important to always be um, considering the optics of how you behave within mm. your own business. Considering the optics of how you behave within your own business. Okay. I wonder if you do this, do you ever just like imagine yourself uh, watching yourself work and seeing how like other people will respond to doing it? I was like a third person. <laughs> yes, because I'm always being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. I've noticed you do a lot of content. 
a lot yeah. of content. What um, wh- why do you why do you guys do so much content? Like, what what's the idea behind the content? Is it just to show what it's like a day in, or or what's the big purpose? Look, we look okay. Um, we started off so. So I'm going to go back to my previous roles. I worked yeah, yeah. in for international um, sales and marketing for big hotels like Sheraton and Shangri La. Oh, nice. So, so I came from I come from a background of um, sales and marketing and being able to market something that literally everybody wanted. So everybody wants to stay in, in a beautiful five star ho- hotel. <laughs> in an exotic location. So, uh, of course. I mean, when I, when I look back on it, what an easy job. And then <laughs> I moved into, then I moved into clean call, kicking and screaming, because I really didn't want to be in the cleaning industry. But that's a whole, that's a, that's a whole other podcast. And <laughs> I, um, I had to figure out how to sell something that nobody wanted to buy. Because nobody, nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to buy a cleaning contract today. Nobody. So, so that was the first challenge in, in, in kind of moving forward there. And, and I think that, that, I, I think that that realization of, of, of how to, how to make that shift made me want to make our business a little bit more playful. And mm. I, you know, I, there are so there are so many cleaning companies out there, and they and it, with the utmost of respect, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to share this because I, I really have to. They're putting in photos of a dirty bathroom and then a clean bathroom, and then they're wondering why nobody comments and get or engages at all. And I, what I tell you with respect is, nobody cares. Nobody, nobody cares about a post like that. They just scroll on by. What you need to do is, is create interest around your brand. And that's what, that's what we, that's what, that's, that's what we do. And, uh, you know, I have had people privately DM me and say, Oh, that video, you know, that wasn't really about the cleaning industry. I don't care. It's about who <laughs> we are. It's about who we are. It shows a different side. And interestingly, it, it really becomes like it's, it, it's, I mean, it's really working. Um, we, we're on TikTok, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram. We don't really do anything on Facebook, but, um, but it, it works. And so now, you know, my sales team go out to see a client and, you know, and they'll be referencing back to the funny video that, yeah. they saw that, that literally had nothing to do with cleaning. So it like, you know, riddle me this. It works. It just is. It, it's a lot of work, and you know, the creative aspect. I'm I'm very lucky that I have a team here who are so happy to. Well, I say so happy. Some of them <laughs> like being in videos, but but it, it's almost written into the contract now. You work for Clean Call, yeah, you're going to be in a video or two. Um, but that's it, very it, cool. It by shows the way. A, yeah, it shows a different side of us. So we're not just we are not just people who carry backpack vacuums and mops and buckets and and re- relating being becoming more relatable in an industry where people don't care like I, I'm, I'm talking about customers don't care of I'm course of course um, it, it, it gives us an edge angel it makes us different and um, you know being different is is, is really it's good, good when in, in, a, in a crowded marketplace all right, hang with me for the next minute and a half. We got a quick break here in the Profitable Cleaner because we're officially official. So I kind of like to say it. Why? Because I get to take this break and introduce our sponsors. First sponsors is Usource. So go to usource.com. That's U-S-O-U-R-C-E.com. This is a business management platform for facility services company. No more chaos, unnecessary admin work, or just having to consolidate information. This is about you, you not being the source of information anymore and having a platform that can give you accessibility, visibility, and control over your operation. So see more, do more, whether you're one employee or 3,000 employees, this is the platform for you. So check out our sponsor, usource.com. Our second sponsor, dayporter.com. They will help you with all your outbound, LinkedIn, email, call, and they're going to do it with a team from Latin America. So make sure that... Th- that you reach out to them, dayporter.com. They can help you hire your next superstar and give you the strategies to go book the walkthroughs that you're looking for. 
The third, third one is going to be Melgar Consulting. That's alexmelgar.com. If you're hovering around the $5 million range and you're in the facility services industry, want to hit those 20, want to keep bumping your head and really want to scale, he is going to be able to consult and help you have the right foundation, the right structure, and the right strategies, and the right advisory and consulting to get you past those 5 to $20 million. So go to alexmelgar.com. And last but not least, our fourth sponsor, cleaningprofits.com. That is our annual event for facility services, CEO, executive teams, leadership teams. Bring them out. This is all about transformation. It's all about training. It's all about community. And it's held once a year this year, September 12th to the 14th. So thank you once again to all of our sponsors. And let's continue on to the show. I think knowing how to, you got to learn how to play the game. And I think a lot of people don't understand the concept of gamification or like knowing what game you're supposed to play there. And, and a lot of them, you're right. They don't get, they don't get any attention. They think there's the attention is like so hard to get if done mm-hmm. wrong. But then when you start getting in the flow, like clean corp, it becomes easier. And then like almost people, I bet, I bet people just want to follow you just because you have really cool content. And then eventually that, when they're in their buyer journey, when they're ready mm-hmm. to then consider their options, it's like, oh, I remember this cool video that Lisa posted once. We should check them out, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, and it, and it just it, yeah, it just look. If uh, I we the way we look at it is, it, if if we just get one brand recognition from that video, it has been totally worth it. Totally, hundred percent. So, um, you know, what's Especially the ROI? Long-term play, I, like at the long term play, like yeah, you don't need a ROI. RO, what is it? Is RO? I always teach people it's ROI. ROI. Investment. Then there's ROO. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that yeah. one. Return on objective, and then mm-hmm. ROT, return on time. And what you're doing yeah. is full blown objective. Like yes. you will be known more than your competitors, and yes. it's a long term play. Now, absolutely. I have a weird question for you. Um, <laughs> not a. Well, it's not weird. It's not weird. But there's a lot of people that are scared to get in front of cameras and or even a camera follow them. It's not even like you have to talk like this, but like they're mm-hmm. scared whenever you say record, right? Or three, two, one. But that is crucial. Learning how to communicate through video is so much different, especially where we're going. Um, what advice would you give to someone? Because you're really good on camera. You're very comfortable mm-hmm. uh, and not a lot of people are. Yeah, I again because I've always got a camera in my face. <laughs> but was it like look, that in the beginning too? Like when they? No, you know. no, it wasn't. Um, I remember uh, I was I, I was actually in the US in uh, for, for a, a, a conference in 2014, and uh, with that there was there was a lot of camera stuff that had to be done a lot. And I think I think on that trip I just had to become comfortable with it and and you and lose that self consciousness and and since then look I, I mean don't get me wrong there's pl- we do plenty of takes and there's plenty of times where I go oh no we can't use that. <laughs> no we can't use that but I, I don't know I feel like people that they, they will connect whether my hair looks right or it doesn't, whether I'm wearing black or white, um, I, I think people connect, they connect with the message and then they connect with the person. So if I'm, if I'm talking about something that I believe in and I'm passionate about, then I think the way I communicate it is probably going to transcend, you know, the other things, my, my, you know, being shy, being, um, a little bit, you know, worried about having a camera there. It, I, I look at it as this: this is something that I, I have years and years and years of experience 100%. running a very big company. I can, I could probably share some of the things that I know and, and help someone who's coming up. Do they care how I look? No. So, um, you know, that I, I, it, I don't know. I, I don't know if that. No, you, I don't you hit that it. Answers the question, but that. No, that 100% is that. So it's funny because people think that people care a lot about what they look like and what they're going to say. They don't really care. And if you have, like you said, if you have the passion and if you have knowledge to share, don't be selfish, right? Like get out there, make it up. Don't make it about yourself. Make it about the people that 
that might <laughs> one day watch that video. Um, let's go a little bit. We'll, we'll shift gears a little bit, but obviously this whole conversation of like speed of trust, smart marketing, uh, comp- like standing out, being different, the videos, you're obviously you have experience when it comes down to marketing, sales, branding, positioning. You don't just say these things and not have expertise. How has it, how helpful has it been to come from a marketing and sales background and how are you continuously developing yourself now? Cause you're playing at a different level now than before. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, the, it's the biggest advantage in this business because everything else, every, everything else that comes along, I, I, I feel like you, know, you can handle that. I've got, People who can, who do all, you know, all the financials, for example, but the creative side of things, the marketing, that's what, that's, that's what fuels my passion. I, I love it. And I, you know, that's, that's been my entire career has been based in sales and marketing. So I like, I I like being with people. I enjoy that side of things. I love to serve. Um, it's, it's it's very that's very deeply baked into who I am, so nice. it 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 just I don't know Angel it just, it just comes, <laughs> you can it tell just you get all through. passionate I love it I love it yeah it, it's just one of those things and and I know that there are there are a lot of cleaning business owners out there who don't have a they they don't they don't feel comfortable in the marketing space they don't know and then and then because of that they go out. And they, you know, they they probably pay a lot of money to other people to do things for them, and that that's a bit of a that, that it's a little bit of a trick. That's a little bit tricky. 100%. I'll share what my my thoughts are on that. I only work with people who have achieved more than myself. That's my that's first good. thing. That is the first thing. I would never engage, and I have had a couple of business coaches along the line, along along my my career and what and what i would say is don't ever hire a business coach who has not achieved what you want to achieve if they haven't done it how on earth can they get you to do it how 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 could they possibly be equipped to do that 100%. so you you've got you you really have to have been able to um walk the walk before you can before you can talk the talk so that's the first mm-hmm. thing the second thing is you need to pay attention to um, you know, to our culture now, our culture is, you know, videos. It's people on social media. It's LinkedIn. And if there is nowhere, if there is nothing else that you do um, on social media, please don't put dirty toilets next to clean ones. And also, like, don't do it. Just please, 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 please stop doing that. It's just wasting <laughs> your time. The other thing is, so, so be playful. Show a little bit of who you are. There's plenty of templates on Instagram that you can easily, you, you know, um, like I'll, I'll quite often, and you, you would have seen them. Sometimes I'll, I'll post, you know, post little things on my own Instagram, and I will have been out and about doing something, and I just take little videos while I'm oh, yeah. out, and then, and then I just collate them. I put them together with some cool um, music, and it look, it, it's a, you know, it probably wouldn't ta- even take me an hour to do that, but it shows, you know, like a C- like one of the ones I've just done is CEO on the go. Um, mm. You know, what am I doing? And, and people, believe it or not, people want to know that stuff. They, you know, they they want to know, like, how how do other people get through the day? What are they doing? How are they how are they getting uh. where they need to go? So, um, you know, I think with the sales and marketing, you you have to start somewhere. Somewhere, if you're in the commercial space, so if you're in janitorial, that somewhere for you is LinkedIn. And 100%. That, and that is, you know, you have to be dedicated to it and not be a taker, be a giver. So, you know, when you're when you're scrolling through your feed, like comment, give, give like take one second out of your life and give that person a comment or a like or sorry, a comment or a share or 100%. or even repost it and then you know start building from there reach out to your connections i i, I reach out to to people every day um and do you have like a that, minimum of outreach that you do no or not I don't, really it's I just don't, more of a... i don't it's 
it's very much how I'm feeling in the day. And, um, you know, at the, at the moment we are, we're, we're all racing towards our fine, like end of year projects. Every, every team has a project at the moment. Um, so we're all racing towards that. So I just do it when I can. I, I do it when it gives, when it brings me joy as well. Don't look at it as out of intention. Like the right intention. Yeah. 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 Like, like I'm, I'm going to go in this and I'm, it's like walking into a room full of strangers and finding someone you want to talk to. You can either stand in the corner and never speak to anyone, or you can you can just go up and say hi. And honestly, I I I get so many opportunities because I'm out there um, that I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had other otherwise. So that would be my advice. And I know it can be scary for those of you who who don't have a sales and marketing background. So just do that one thing. And I promise you, it will. St- you will start to see things happening, but you need to be consistent with it. So, one, I agree. I think you need to get people's attention, but I think you just gotta go and. I was talking to somebody that was like, "Oh man, how do I prospect?" And they were like, so in their head about prospecting, and I was like, "They're like, what's my process? What email? What, what exact message?" And I'm like, "Or why don't you just go make friends?" And they're like. What do you mean? I'm like, yeah, just, hey, really cool picture. Oh, that's cool that you were fishing. Oh, how's the bit? Like, just go talk. Yeah. Like how you would talk to someone in front of you. And that's what people want at the end of the day. They want that human. You can spot automation. You can spot fakeness very, very, uh-huh. very fast. Yeah. Very fast. And so yeah. I like what you're doing. Yeah. Um, now though you are playing at a different level so it's not as easy as just putting a camera i think you're very strategic what have been your top three books or top three influencers when it comes down to learning strategic marketing or personal branding or influence who 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 are some of those or those books oh boy where do i start i can't too many i I know i know i can't do three oh my gosh i can't do three but All right, okay. we're going to do 35. So, so John S- <laughs> <laughs> Number uh, 100. Um, no, uh, okay. The John Asheraf book that I mentioned earlier, for me, it came at a time in my life where I, and, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to get too deep here, guys, but I'm going to tell you that I believe that that book came to me. Um, that, but I, I feel like that book was shared with me by the universe. I really do. Because as soon as that book was in my hands, I like my mind just was opened up so much and I and I but I still have the book and sometimes if I if I'm looking for some inspiration you know what I do I great I wish I had the, I actually I wish I had the book here to show you. I just open it and whatever and it whatever page is, whatever <laughs> page I open it at I feel like oh okay or it, it either has the answer or it prompts me with an answer it's just oh, the weirdest thing so that it. one um, oh, I wish I could go to my book. My bookcase is right there. We don't have the book. You can, um, you Vern, can. I'll, I'll make some time while you go if you want. I'll just, yeah, you know. V- Vern Harness. Do you want me to go and get the book? Are we, yeah, if you want to get them. Yeah, okay. yeah oh, well, do your thing. Vern Harness scaling up. Like scaling that. up. Yeah. And, Andrea, um, make sure we write these down. The answer yeah. and scaling up. Scaling up and Jim Rohn, um, good, uh, good to great. Amazing, oh. amazing. Oh. Um, the tipping point. I can't remember the authors. Sorry, the tipping point. Um, like there, there are just so <sighs> many, and and a lot. I know that a lot of people don't. They, 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 they like. I'm not a. I'm, they say I'm not a reader. I'm not a reader. But you can, you can get an audible book. Yeah. Um, if you, if you get one idea, that book or that listen, that was worth it, and that's all 100%. I'm going for. I'm going. I'm. I'm not reading a book from start to finish, thinking, "Oh, this is going to solve every, you know, every challenge 100%. in my whole life." If I find one thing, I it's been a huge. The, the return on investment on my time has been massive, and I always That's do. Right. I, I always find well, something. People don't know that. Why? Why do people overcomplicate that part? That's almost like the speed of trust that you're talking about. It takes one technician, one cleaner, to come up with one idea that can revolutionize your whole business it could give it the, the shift that it requires and then the whole salary of the employee was worth it like everything Absolutely. was worth it Absolutely. have you read the dip? The, dip? The, the 
No, I haven't read that. You should read it. You would probably, based on the tipping point scaling up, uh, you will like the dip. The okay. dip is I'll look for it. the dip is very cool. And then uh, poke the box by Seth. They're both by the Seth Godin, I believe. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. We're just going to turn this into a book club, basically. So, Andrea, I'll just write down all the books, <laughs> and we're all just going to read. <laughs> Angel and Lisa's book club, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, hey, it sounds I, great. Yeah, yeah. If there, are, there are just so many There are so many good books out there, to, and, but just you've, got to, you've just got to start. 100%. 100%. Yeah. No, it's – I like it. I, those books, by the way, are crazy, so I'm excited to – I've read the – tipping point i haven't read scaling up or the answer so i'm gonna get them as soon as we hang up uh and yeah. we'll put the link also in the in the show notes so that people can uh read them so people can read uh, them and if you do get them and read them let lisa and i know like send us a message be like oh my god i've read it this is crazy because that, that's what feeds that's what gets me going i'm sure that's what gets lisa going when someone yeah. implements what someone teaches and then they see the fruition um of, of that implementation um, Absolutely. Lisa, I have a question for you because I know we're coming up to the time. So I have some awesome questions left over here. One of them would be the following. Obviously, you have a big vision. What's the big vision for CleanCorp? What's next for CleanCorp? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, now we're now I can say it. We're in our 30th year. Um, woo. So, woo! You know, cue, cue balloons, cue, cue party, um, party, party. <laughs> Um, it, like it's a big thing. It's like a big mental uh, jump to get to get at your business. I'm not even thirty years, years old, even. so your company is <laughs> older. Your company is older than I am. Oh, uh, did you? Oh, yeah. That's well. <laughs> now I now I feel really old. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Every, nobody see. Nobody can see me on this, right? We're not filming, although I'm filming. Um, we're, but, we're, this goes on YouTube. Oh, you're filming. Oh, it's just oh, yeah. on YouTube. Okay, You've got right. a YouTube so channel, of course. People, people are going to think I'm ancient, but um... not at all. <laughs> um, sorry, I've forgotten the question now. My gosh, sorry. <laughs> <It's>, but... <laughs> that happens more than we want to. That happens a million times. What's the next vision for Clean Corp? The next vision, okay, okay. The, the, the next vision is we are actually taking the business, and this is big news. I haven't. Um, I haven't shared this with anyone, so this is uh, super big news. We are taking ClinCorp into a franchise model. Wow, we get um, insider. Yeah. Let's go. Yes, yes. Um, I, look, I was, I was, I was about to do it before you know all that other stuff happened, um, and and it just it, it it wasn't the right time then, but it feels like the right time now. And I I am I do get a lot of people. Uh, not not in Australia, but I get a lot of people from um, from you know outside of Australia who are quite interested in the brand and what we're doing, and have asked me in the past, you know, do you franchise? Which we never have. We've always been um, like corporately owned. Like Holmes and I own the business, um, and that's that's just always been the way it is. But it's time. I think it's time to share to share what we've created with the rest of the world. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, a slightly different model to, um, quote unquote, your regular franchise. Um, I've got some really clear ideas. I'm not going to share those with you yet because please don't, uh, please don't. We're, we're we're not ready to we're not ready to share that with the world. Um, but let me tell you, it's going to be freaking amazing. It's going to be great. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that. There's a lot of regulatory stuff that we have to work through here, um, as with any franchise. So I'm I'm hoping and praying that we can make it for the first of July, but I don't know for sure. I at this point, it's, the, the the date is kind of yeah. out of my hands. We can, 100%. we can do we can do everything that we do, but it does. It, it just there's too many government departments to count that I have to go through to get it all done. Yeah. So um, especially if the plan. franchise gets out of out of where you're at too, and now you're talking about US, and it's just it's a whole mess. But it's a big vision. I was talking to my mom, funny enough, and I'm like, you know what makes entrepreneurs entrepreneurs is the fact that we can do very well. Like we can be fine. Thirty years in business, great. I could stop here and hang out, or I can risk it all and do a franchise model or I can try to double my size or it's like this thing where you're not satisfied. You're content. You're grateful. You appreciate it, but you're not done. 
And I think yeah. that's very cool that you're exploring that. I can, I can, inv I can kind of see it now that I get to meet you now and, 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 and feel your energy. Like it's going to be a great franchise. So uh, hopefully you get to share the news and we get to yeah. bring you down to our event from Australia. That would be very fun. Yeah, I have a, two more questions for you. One is just a random question. But if somebody looks at the title and it says Lisa McQueen, okay, that's cool. Um, but they don't want to listen to everything because they're like, let's see if it's worth listening to. So they skip to the end, skip to these last five minutes. And what advice or what message, doesn't have to be an advice, what message would you want somebody to take away if all they do is listen to this end? Oh, I, I would say if you are a cleaning business owner or a cleaning business entrepreneur, you, you, you are trying to figure it out. You want to scale, but you don't know how to do it. You, you want to do better, but you, you're not sure how. You're struggling with hiring people or all of those challenges, you need to listen to this podcast. You need to listen to <laughs> what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you are afraid of what the next step is in your business or if you just don't know what that next step is, then yeah, you need to listen to this podcast because there is, this is a business, my business, 29 years old, super successful, um, huge brand in Australia and New Zealand. And honestly, if I can do it, anyone could do it. <laughs> I love it. That's so smart because you didn't say what, you didn't give any specific advice. This, I know your brain speaks marketing and, and I love it because now all I want to do is go re-listen to it, even though I just did it live. Now I'm like, wait, did I miss something? Even though I was here live, like I want to go, I'm going to go check out this podcast again. Final mm -hmm. question for you. Um, let's, we're going to go into the future. Okay. So it is December. Oh my God. It's already December. I feel like I'm already mm -hmm. in the future. It's December 1st, 2028. We're on episode 1000. 257 because this podcast will never die um and we brought you back on so we're back welcome hey welcome 2028 um what yeah. advice would what what message or what would you say to lisa now or to lisa five years ago since we're in 2028 episode 1298 hey andrea crazy thought here can you put a calendar invite for me and you for 2028 November 30th so I can say or November 20th so I can send a reminder to Lisa so we could do podcast 1200 um side note what would advice would you give to yourself now or what would you tell yourself um, what would I tell myself I think I would tell myself that I've got this um, that I that I'm on the right track to, you know just to I think I'd tell myself yeah you know you make you make you've made mistakes along the way and owned them um you've made mistakes along the way and learned from them you've made mistakes along the way and been punished because of them but you're still here and you're doing well you're growing you've got a killer franchise business well um, that's smart boom. um and you know and your <laughs> or your, your social media is do, like going crazy that's what i would say you're on the right track i love it I love it. I love doing that activity. And then I like to set reminders, which is crazy. I will set reminders in my calendar and then I'll get there a year later. And I'm like, what is, oh my God, I forgot I said I was going to do this. So that's really, <laughs> I will be, we're going to call you or email you or visit you four years or five years from now. Watch, it's going to happen. And you are going to have I'll, a I'm huge, waiting. I'll be waiting. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, be waiting. waiting for five years. Um, I'll be waiting for the calendar invite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Send, her, hey, send the invite, too, because that's going to surprise all of us in five years. We will forget, and it's going to be a good time. Um, well, listen. Who is she? Anyone know who this woman is? No, yeah. you're going to be such an influencer. Like You're going to be everywhere. That We're going to be like, wait, we get the Lisa McQueen in our oh podcast? Goodness. Just be ready. Be ready. Well, listen, uh, stay here for a little after I, I we, we stay here. but. For those listening, connect with Lisa. We're putting her LinkedIn here. We'll put her company down here. If you're thinking of doing the franchise once it's ready, maybe you love the brand, reach out to Lisa. Uh, we'll put the notes of the books. Lisa, once again, thanks so much for being here. Andrea, thank you for my weirdness throughout the podcast because now we got calendar invites. We appreciate you all for listening. We'll see you all in the next Profitable Cleaner podcast. Thank you. Bye.